A few days ago, I made a video which said seven reasons to never ever visit Nepal. Well, I don't really know what happened, but around 800 of you got in touch with me, telling me that you wanted to visit Nepal all the more after having watched that video. Well, in case you do choose to visit Nepal, today I'm going to tell you the three things that you must never ever eat in Nepal. When I was a little girl, there were some rules that were extremely strict in my house. Rule number one, non-violence. My sister and me often had arguments, but we were never really allowed to hit each other or to scream and shout. Arguments were fine, violence of any sort was absolutely not. Number two, rule number two in my house was non-lying and no stealing. You see, even as a child, we were taught that lying is bad. Even if I did badly in my exams, I had to own up and tell my parents about it. And also, I could not even dare to steal candy from my own mother's cupboard. The third rule that my house took very, very seriously was non-addiction. As children, we were never allowed to have anything that was moderately addictive. Till date, I don't have tea and coffee because I've just been programmed to believe that they're addictive and you mustn't have them. However, I came to Nepal in 2006 and all that was about to change. You see, when I came here, I was exposed to this phenomenally rich food culture that they have here. Here, food is not just something you eat to sustain yourself. Food is a way of life. Food is celebrations. Families get together over conversations and elaborate meals. Food is a great way for people to bond and come together. Food is prepared using different spices in different parts of the country and the method of preparation is also very, very different. You see a lot of influence of Tibetan cuisine here. Thakali cuisine is extremely popular and it's an extremely high carbohydrate diet. Nevari cuisine is a high protein diet and it's very, very, very good for the meat lovers. There are many, many varieties available. Also, cuisine from the Tarai and Tharu cuisine are extremely rich. In fact, it won't be an exaggeration to say that a month-long vacation in Nepal will not do justice to all the food we have here. A year probably will be a much better choice if you want to try everything that's available here, from the different varieties of cheeses to all the alcohol, as well as to all the different meats and fruits and vegetarian preparations. Now I'm going to tell you what are some of my favorite food items to try in Nepal. When I think of my favorite items in Nepali food, I'm always reminded of dhedo, which is a great carbohydrate-rich kind of preparation. I also completely love Golbeda Kuachar, which is like this rich tangy tomato condiment and dip. I also completely, completely love chupri, Churpi and Thukpa. Thukpa is like this Tibetan soup with a lot of different vegetables and a lot of warm flavors that really warm up your heart. I also love Kwati, which is a protein soup. It's extremely, extremely good for people who want to make their bodies fitter and who want to grow their muscles. I also love Chatamari. It is like this, this sort of Nepali version of pizza. It looks beautiful, it photographs very well and it tastes great as well. I also love Jujudhau. Jujudhau is like this sweet yogurt which is found specifically in Bhaktapur, which is a part of the Kathmandu Valley. When you have it cold on a hot summer day, it sort of makes you feel alive, come alive. I totally, totally love Juju Dhau. I also love Alu Tareko. In fact, around two months ago, I called up somebody I really trust with Nepali food and I asked her for a recipe and I can vouch for the fact that I prepare pretty good Alu Tareko now. Another one of my favorites is Bhatma Sandeko. I also learned that Bhatmas is extremely good for health and this is a great snack to have with your meals. Another thing that I love, love, totally love is sail roti. But this is not enough. This list I promise could go on and on and on. However, in this video, I'm not going to tell you about the things that are good and that you must eat. I'm going to tell you about three things that you must never ever eat when you're in Nepal. So let's get started. Yes, you heard it right, steamed momos. I believe that nothing, nothing in Nepal can rival the popularity of the humble steamed momos. You see, steamed momos in Nepal are a meal, a snack and also an indulgence. Steamed momos are everywhere. They're like these perfect little bites of heaven that you get to experience on a daily basis. What exactly is a momo? A momo is a dumpling, which is basically a little piece of flour inside which you fill in a spicy vegetable or a meat mix. Each little dumpling is then painfully wrapped and steamed. The dumplings themselves are not very spicy, however. 
they're accompanied by this absolutely flavorful dip which is like an explosion of flavors in your mouth. I can't actually decide what I like more, the dip or the dumplings themselves. If someone asked me, what's the one thing I can eat every day till the day I die, it would have to be these steamed momos because you know what? Not only do they warm up my heart, they also satisfy my soul. The other great thing about steamed momos is that they're available everywhere and there's one for every budget and one for every palate. However, these cute looking, innocent looking, absolutely delicious pieces of heaven hide inside them some absolutely evil powers. Let me tell you about them. You see, I'm a very decisive person. Every time I go to a restaurant, I know exactly what I want to eat. However, on the other hand, my husband is completely indecisive. He has this very strange habit. Every time he goes somewhere, he looks through the entire menu, front to back, and then back to front, up to down, down to up. He'll take 10 more minutes, scratch his head, and then he'll call the manager. He'll ask the manager what's the special of the day. He'll contemplate, he'll think, he'll calculate. And at the end of this elaborate exercise, he will order a plate of steamed momos. And this has not just happened once in our lives. I can recall at least 8 to 10 times that this has happened. And this always brings out the violent side of me. I want to fight with him for not only having wasted so much time doing this, but for also being so indecisive. If you want a momo, just ask for a momo. So, if you don't want to fight with your spouse over something as stupid as this, never ever have steamed momos in your life. Number two, chili momo or sea momo. Chili momo or sea momo is basically like an elevation of the basic steamed momo. Basic steamed momos are first fried and then sauteed with this, this absolutely magical mixture of vegetables and this gravy which is flavored with the most, most delicious spices. Steamed momos are hot and beautiful and when you bite into them, you hear a crunch and then the sticky sort of mushy filling warms up your heart and makes you feel absolutely wonderful inside. However, there's one thing that nobody tells you about sea momos and that is that along with this filling, they're also filled up with lies and deceit. Let me tell you how. My son, six years old, loves sea momos. However, most of the country knows that in one plate of sea momos, you would traditionally get 10 pieces. But my son believes that in one plate of sea momos, you get only eight pieces. This is because I have become so used to stealing two pieces even before he can notice that my son believes that eight is the real number. So, as a mother, I feel guilty. But I can't always help myself. Those little sea momos call out to me. They beg me to eat them. I don't know how to resist. So if you don't want to feel guilty, if you don't want to feel like a thief who's stealing from your old child's plate, never ever eat chili momos in Nepal. Number three, Jhol Momo. Jhol Momo, according to me, is all my food dreams rolled into one. Jhol Momos are basically momos, steamed momos, which are then submerged into this beautiful spicy soup which is flavorful and smells like a dream. Jhol momos are perhaps the perfect juxtaposition of bland as well as spicy flavors. I can't think of any single person who has tried them but not completely fallen in love with them. I always say this, Jhol momos in fact are like the ultimate comfort food. They're like your memories of childhood. They're like the flavors and fragrances of streets you walked past. They're also like the promise of excitement. However, Jhol Momos, just like the other two varieties, also have a deep, dark secret. They're addictive. No, actually, that's a lie. They are highly, highly addictive. You see, I'm not addicted to anything else in the world, but every Saturday morning, I can feel this familiar longing in my heart and my stomach. I know that's only going to be quenched if I have my share of Jhol Momos. So, if you don't want to feel that pain, if you don't want to feel that longing for something that you can't have, never ever have Jhol Momos in Nepal. Here is a bonus tip for you. What is the one item that you should never ever make by yourself? Well, you guessed it right, it is momos. Because you see, any variety of momos takes around two to three hours to make. 
and you absolutely end up filling yourself up and finishing whatever you've made within five minutes. Why would you want to do that? Leave this job to the specialists. There are many, many amazing, amazing restaurants all around Nepal that specialize in momos that are sure to please you. They make momos not just as a profession, but also as an art form. For them, making momos is not just filling up these little dumplings with meat and spices and vegetables, but also with blessings from their ancestors. So if you live within Nepal, you never ever make momos. Order them from some of the most amazing restaurants we have. However, if you live outside Nepal, I do understand that you all get together and bond over momo making. Do that, have a momo party and share the love around these very, 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 very important parts of Nepali food cuisine. But there are so many varieties of momos, even apart from these three, that sometimes I feel there's one for every season. There's one for every reason. There's one for every occasion. There's one for every celebration. But momo is not just a food, it's an emotion. It's a connection. And in my life, momo has been my longest, longest love affair. No matter what happens, momo is always there. Momo, the love for it I cannot control because momos are truly, truly food for the soul. So if you, if you don't want to get addicted, have fights with your spouse and also be guilty of stealing from your child, never ever eat momos in Nepal because you may never ever want to stop.